This is part 19 of Razor Pages tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss model validation in ASP.NET Core Razor Pages. Let's understand this with an example. At the moment, we are on the employee list page. Let's edit one of the employee details. Notice, I can, for example, blank out name and email fields and then click the update button. The data gets updated. We now have an employee without name and email. You want to make both these fields, name and email, required fields. If you recollect from our previous videos in this series, the model class for this edit tracer page is the employee class and this model class is present in this models project. So let's open the employee class. Name property of this class is bound to the name UI field. Similarly, email property is bound to the email UI field. And if you want to make these two UI fields required fields, we have to decorate both these properties with the required attribute. The required attribute is present in system.componentModel.data annotations namespace. This namespace is present in a different NuGet package and we have to add that NuGet package to this models project. So let's right click on the project name and then select this option manage NuGet packages and this is going to launch NuGet package manager in the search text box search for system.componentModel.data annotations namespace and make sure you are on the browse tab and this is the NuGet package that contains this namespace and then finally click the install button this is going to install that package for us there we go the installation is complete now let's decorate both the name and email properties with the required attribute the required attribute is present in system dot component model dot data annotations namespace so let's bring that in let's also decorate email property with the same required attribute Next, in the edit tracer page, this on post method is called when we click update button. So before we save any of this data, we want to check if the model state is valid. So let's include if model state dot is valid, only then we want to execute this code. Else, we want to re-render this same edit trace page so the user can correct any validation errors and then resubmit the form. Notice, now when we blank out name and then click update button, we have a runtime null reference exception. That's because this employee property on the model object is null. To fix this exception, instead of using a parameter of type employee to this onPost method, let's use this public property employee. First, let's decorate this property with the bind property attribute. With this attribute in place, when we submit this edit razor page, the data that we have on this form from these form controls will be populated with the corresponding properties on the employee object. And then let's use this employee object inside our on post method. So let's remove this parameter employee and then instead use the public property. With these changes in place, let's rerun our project. Now, if we blank out name and then click the update button, notice the form is re-rendered, but we don't see any validation error. So now what we want to do is display the validation errors as you can see right here. To display the validation errors, we use ASP validation for tag helper. So in the edit tracer page display template, we have the name UI field HTML right here. So next to the name input field, let's include a span element and then use ASP dash validation for tag helper and set the value of this to employee.name. And we want the validation error message to be displayed in red color. So let's use the bootstrap class text dash danger. Let's do the same with the email field and change the property name here to employee.email. ASP validation for tag helper displays the validation error message next to the respective UI field. In addition to these validation errors, we also want to display the summary of all validation errors right here. To display the summary of validation errors, we use ASP validation summary tag helper. So let's include a div element right here and then use ASP validation summary tag helper, set its value to all and 
let's again use the bootstrap class text dash danger with all these changes in place let's run our project in debug mode we are on the list page let's navigate to the edit tracer page blank out name and email fields and before we click this update button let's place a breakpoint on this on post method and then click the update button our breakpoint is set now if you're wondering where is this model state property coming from well it's coming from this base page model class and if we now hover the mouse over this is valid property notice the value is false so none of this code inside the if block is executed instead this edit page is re-rendered with the validation errors so the user gets the opportunity to fix those validation errors and then resubmit the form so notice when we continue the execution we see the validation errors as expected these are the default validation messages that we get out of the box can we customize these default messages yes absolutely first let's stop debugging let's say when a value is missing for this name property we want to set the error message to name is required notice when i open the bracket on this required attribute we can see all the different properties that we can set we want to set this error message property let's set it to name is required now when a value for the name field is missing we see our custom error message as expected there are several built-in validation attributes in addition to required we have regular expression this validates if the provided value matches the pattern specified by the regular expression range specifies the minimum and maximum value allowed min length specifies the minimum length of a string max length specifies the maximum length of a string compare compares two properties of a model for example compare email and confirm email properties let's look at some of these validation attributes in action on this email property in addition to using the required attribute let's also use the regular expression attribute we want to ensure the provided email has got the correct email format notice from the IntelliSense the first parameter is the regular expression itself if the provided email is not valid we want the error message to be invalid email format Let's also use min length validation attribute. In addition to making name required, let's also make sure it has got at least three characters. We want the minimum number of characters to be three and the error message to be name should contain at least three characters. At the moment, we are using multiple validation attributes on name and email properties. There are two ways we can use multiple validation attributes. We can either stack them on top of each other like this or separate them using a comma like this. Notice now if we enter less than three characters for name and an invalid email format and then try to submit this page we get validation errors as expected name should contain at least three characters invalid email format we have another built-in attribute display this is not a validation attribute it's mostly used for display purpose on the UI by default the labels that we see here are the names of the properties in the corresponding model class for example the label for the email field is email because the corresponding property name is email now if you want the label to be something else like for example office email that's when we use the display attribute and then set the name property to whatever you want in our case we want it to be office email when we reload this page notice we see the label as office email three simple steps to implement model validation in a razor pages project first apply validation attributes on the properties of the corresponding model class next use model state dot is valid property to check if validation has succeeded or failed and finally use the validation tag helpers asp validation for and asp validation summary to display the corresponding validation errors that's it in this video thank you for listening